Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, The Growing Developer. And we are yet here with third part of the stream tutorial series. And we are slowly moving towards the block pattern. So this will be a shorter video where we'll be focusing mainly on stream view, uh, stream builder. Now the stream builder holds much of importance in our Flutter development because it allows us many things that we will shortly see in our video as well. So without wasting any time, let's uh, quickly jump into the video and see what the stream, uh, stream builder does and how we can implement it in our Flutter application. Yeah, so let's start. The Growing Developer. Okay, so if you are coming directly from my second part, then you would know what we have on our screens. This is directly from my earlier videos. Okay, so what I can, I, I'll just repeat it. So if I restart this application, so what, what happens is that this counter goes from zero to 100, just like a download progress. And we can see that uh, we are able to listen it multiple times. Right, we created our own streams as you can see. Get dummy download progress. This is of type stream, and then at the last, we throw the exception to stop the listening. Okay, you can always go to the info section right here and uh, uh, watch the video from the description as well. Okay, so I'll implement the same thing, but we started listening to it in on our init state, right? Instead of this, I'm going to use Stream Builder. So what is the Stream Builder after all? So let's see. So I'll write Stream Builder. Now, there are two important properties of Stream Builder. One is the builder itself, and other is the stream. So, I'm, so what this does is, uh, we need to tell the Stream Builder like which stream to listen. As you can see here as well, we were listening to get dummy download progress. So as a stream, I can write get dummy download progress, and we can call it. So this get dummy download progress will return the stream. Okay, that is fine. Next thing is this builder. Whenever you see the builder, builder will always take the context. And this time we don't uh, require the context as such. And then the second property is always the snapshot. So what is this snapshot? Whatever we get from the stream is the snapshot. Okay. Now this snapshot is very important and uh, is very useful because it has many properties like I can write snapshot has error, has code, uh, hash code and then ha has data. We can check if this is a, if our snapshot is having any data or if it is having any errors. So based on that, we can build the UI. Okay, let's see. So I'll put a if condition here. I would say if snapshot has data. Okay. If it has the data, then I'm going to return a text. And inside this, I'll write snapshot dot data. Okay, it has some errors, which is uh, let me convert it to string because this stream that we are returning is of type integer and we cannot pass any integer values to the text. Okay, next, this much is fine. Next, this much is fine. Let's move into what if it has some errors, right? So we need some error builders, error scenarios as well. So if it has errors, else, if snapshot dot has error, if it has some error, then I can write or return a text which says error occurred Okay, or I can directly print here or display snapshot dot error. Simple, right? It's converted to string. This makes sense. Okay, I'm still getting this error here that it should return something. 
why I, am I getting this error? Because if snapshot has data, if snapshot has error, then there can be any any third uh, scenario where we are waiting for the connections and all that. So apart from that, we can just return text which says loading. So we have covered three scenarios here. If our snapshot, which is the data, uh, the stream is returning. If the snapshot has the data, or by any means, if, if any error occurred, if any exception occurred, then what if it has the error, what you show there. And the third and the last is, what if it, it doesn't have the data right now, and it doesn't have the error itself. So we are waiting for some connections, right? That way as well, we can return just loading, right? So this snapshot has many other useful properties as well. You will you can see it on the screens as well. So these are the properties of snapshot. We can use connection states to determine when to show loading and when to show the complete status. Okay, so this is uh, this requires a detailed implementation, but this will like get you going with the stream builder. Let's see it in the uh, in actions, right? Let's save it. And you can see that this right here, the number is increasing from zero to 100. And just after I reach 100, right? Let's see what happens. After I reach 100, I get this exception completed. So this is the exception. We were throwing an exception completed here. Make sense? Now you see that whenever I'm hot reloading my application, the stream builder again rebuilds itself. That is how the stream builder actually works this will rebuild again and again the application state is refreshed whereas when we were listening in the in its state itself it will just listen once so this stream uh, stream builder will always keep on listening and rebuilding itself okay so when to use stream builder when not to use stream builder that is a different topic and it will require us i i guess separate video where we can understand when and when not to use stream builders. And stream builders is going to be very important when we are discussing about blocks, when we are implementing block patterns, okay? So any questions, any doubts, you can always ask me in the comments and thank you all for supporting me so much. And I'm trying to be regular and I'll, yeah, I'm just trying. So let's see how far it goes. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you are having a nice day. Goodbye.